and lead us in Jesus paid it all. All right, let's sing the song, Jesus Paid It All, page 157. for the morning offering. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we love you. Lord, that's why we're here, because we want to know more about you. We want to learn how to follow you, learn how to be like you. And Lord, and then to be able to share you with the lost and dying in the world. Lord, we praise you for allowing us to be here today. Lord, we ask that you would just bless the offering. Lord, as we take it, Lord, as God's people, share their love for you in monetary form. Lord, I pray that you would bless the offering, help it to meet our needs, and in the cause of Christ. Lord, we ask these things in your name. Amen. and we must conform or we will be left by the change new world religion serves the god of their choice but salvation still comes in one name that name is jesus the sweet rose of sharon the spotless and pure
All the great leaders who sleep in their graves One day will bow and proclaim He's Lord of all glory, the crown king of kings All creation will thunder his name And that name is Jesus, the sweet rose of Sharon, the spine Take your Bibles, please. Turn to the book. Ah, let's see here. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. Title of the message is, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. If you're thinking there's a song by that title, you would be right. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Start reading at verse number 13 in the book of Matthew. 16, 13, I'll begin to read if you follow along there. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I the son of man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. The text verse is, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Heavenly Father. Thank you that we know who you are. And I'm glad I know who Jesus is. What a wonderful name. Pray that you would just bless the message to our hearts. And Lord, for those perhaps that are here today that don't know who Jesus is, may today they understand who he is and receive him gladly into their life. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, if I was to ask somebody, I'd say, hey, Dan, what's everybody saying about me? Right? That'd be kind of a dumb question. You'd say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're saying about you. Oh, this is, this is a great question, though. Whom do men say that I am? But, who, but what do you say? Who am I? Peter, Peter I'll tell you about one of, his, one of his great moments. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, blessed be thou, Son of Barjona. Flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you. Men won't give you that knowledge. Only God can give it to you. To know that Jesus Christ is the very Son of God. Everything in your life, I don't care how important you are or how unimportant you are, it matters not. Everything in your life depends on that question. Who is Jesus Christ to you? 
Who is he to you? That is the question on which your whole eternity rests. Is do you believe in Jesus Christ, that he is the son of God, that he is the savior of the world, and that he can save you? That's the question. You can go through a lot through life, and you can be the worst sinner there ever was. I mean, you, you, I mean, you could bury Al Capone's name in the dust of memory. You're so much worse than Al Capone. You could be the worst criminal ever. You could be the, the saint. They can name churches after you because you're just such a phenomenal, phenomenal person and believer. They can have monuments in your name because you're just so wonderful. And you've done so much good for humanity. You fill in all the good blanks you want. Both of them wind up in a place called hell. If you don't come to terms with the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and take him as your Savior and him alone as your Savior and with all of your heart believing who he is, trust him. It's called faith. Faith. Put your faith in him. That is the one question that has to be, have the right answer in your life. It won't matter which end of the spectrum of sin you lie on. You can be the best or the worst. It won't make no difference in eternity. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you wind up in eternity in hell. You say, well, pastor, that's hard preaching. No, it's just the truth. And our nation really is a bankrupt of truth now that you mention it. Oh, I guess I mentioned it. We're missing truth. People now redefine what truth is. My faith is in evolution. Not a good place to put it. You better put it in Jesus Christ. Evolution's whole design is to negate Christ. You say, really? What? Of course. If God didn't create man... Why would he send a savior to save him? Simple logic. What, what would be the purpose if, if just happenstance, mankind came out of some evolved mass that blew up in the sky and eventually we came to being billions and billions of years ago? If you don't believe that God, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth and you don't believe that, there certainly would be no need for a savior. There'd be nothing to save. You're not his creation. Why would he love you? Why would he send his son to die for you? Why, why, would, why would we have church? Let's, well, let's don't go golfing. It's a little chilly for that. Let's go stumble beyond. Because at that point, if you, if, you, if you don't have a creator, you don't need a savior. You're going back to the same dust that, that whatever blew up billions of years ago. The same crowd would say, and it's exactly the same crowd. It's been around my whole life, and it just they keep getting bolder and bolder. Uh, same crowd, you know, as, as global warming, that God's not in control of the weather, and that, boy, this, this whole thing is just going to fall apart. Well, you're right. It's going to fall apart exactly when God says it's going to fall apart, as he says in the Bible. And it's going to be very, very hot. You're right about the roaming. It is going to be very hot for you. We have the same crowd that doesn't believe there's boys and girls. DePaul University in Chicago, Illinois, very large university, very renowned in Chicagoland area. DePaul University it would be, as far as in generalities of Christianity, right? It would be a Christian university, DePaul. It's a Catholic university, huge. They have eight choices for gender on their application. Seriously. I have no idea what eight possibilities are, but all of us in here are one of eight. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we're all one of two. Uh, is it boys or girls? But this, the universities are now, you know, offering eight options. I, I, I don't know if you check one or two or three. It just depends, you know, you got seven days in the week. Maybe you're all, maybe you're seven of eight. You know, it just, it's, it's just, what has happened? We, we have gotten so twisted as a nation that defining simple right and wrong. I heard a story of a, a lady that was just murdered. I saw the lady on, uh, talking about it in the news. This lady was, uh, her daughter was brutally killed. And they, they turned the guy back out, I don't know, hours later. And she's just broken hearted. 
that th such a thing could happen. What has happened to our nation? We, the right and the wrong, all these things in, in our world have changed so dramatically. And, and if you're a younger person, you say, well, that doesn't seem like that big a change. Well, believe you me, in my lifetime of 65 years, we have changed dynamically against God. Well, I don't believe in God or Jesus Christ. It's the same philosophy. I'll decide who God is. That's not a choice you get to make. God is God. He just is. And you take him as God. You understand he's God. It's not about who you are and who you decided God is. That's not up for you to decide. No more than it was up to you to decide whether you were born a boy or a girl. You didn't, you didn't try to figure it out before you were born. God is. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is what you have to come to terms with is who he is. The, the nature of our world just re-identifying reality and right and wrong and math and science and all these things are just transformed. Heroes of our nation that that just gave their life's blood miraculously. God led them and they they were able to win the Revolutionary War. It wasn't just odds against them. It was impossible against them. But they providentially believed that Almighty God was with them. And so they, 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 they went forward and established perhaps the greatest nation in the history of mankind, the United States of America. In my opinion, it is. We don't get to define who God is. We don't get to decide what's right and wrong. The Bible has laid out for us what is right and what is wrong. It started way back in the Ten Commandments and right and wrong. So now when we've just redefined right and wrong, redefined mankind, redefined all these things to suit our day-to-day -day opinions, when it comes to Jesus Christ, you must understand that you won't decide whether or not he's the Christ. He is. Your decision is, are you going to believe it and receive him? It's not a question of who he is. Whom do men say that I am? Oh, some say you're Jeremiah, John the Baptist, Elias. Whom do you say? Oh, you are the son of God, the Christ, the son of the living God. And that is the fact of Christianity. Do you know the Christ, the son of the living God? Well, pastor, I feel that, you know, years ago, I, I came back to God, or I came to God when my mother died. Or um, I came to God when I had an accident and, and I asked God to help me. I came to God when I had a child and, and, and I almost nearly died and I survived and I, I, I came to God. Pastor, I, you know, my, my God is, you know, and, and, and you seriously, I, I, I'm, you, you understand that I'm not joking about any of this stuff, right? That's, that's answers that people will tell you how they came to God. It was a certain tragedy in my life, and I, you know, I, I think that was my God moment. Um, you know, Pastor, I, you know, my, my, my God is I, 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 I like to go out in the woods and, and walk in the woods, and, and I, just, I just feel God there. Pastor, I just love to go fishing. And boy, when I'm out on the lake, it's just, it's just, it's just I just think God is there with me. It just, that, that spot just makes me feel like God's with me in that spot. You can fill out, you, may, you look up at the stars and you think, man, this is my God moment. Look at all the stars. All these things that make you feel like there's a God is not believing in the Son of God for salvation. Understand? Going golfing and being out in a beautiful place, feeling relaxed and say, man, God is good. That does not save you. You can love being out in the woods. And it's nature. I get it. It is something that God created. And it may bring you to a moment of, man, this is a God moment for me. And I just, I just feel like I'm close to God. None of those, those are all wonderful things. I'm glad you enjoy the nature of, you know, not too many people, unless they're freezing to death, you know, are out in the snow 
saying, boy, that was my God moment. It's like getting back in my car was my moment, right? We, we don't get to make up our moments and decide. See, what we've done is we've totally changed reality in our nation. Totally changed it. So now anything that I believe, if I believe that I'm a girl today, well, I'm a girl. Not me. Brother Flogger. <laughs> Brother Flogger said that to me. Uh, or Sister Flogger, whichever it was at the day. I'm joking, of course. Man without hair cannot be a sister. You don't get to decide from day to day who you are. It's, it, that's not reality. You don't get to decide reality. You don't get to decide what's right, what's wrong. Those things are defined. And they're defined in the word of God. And we live by the word of God and what it says. Because our world is just shifting sand. And guess what? It's always been that way. It wasn't really a great day when God destroyed the entire planet. No, those are literally the old days, right? Back to Noah, old days. What happened? The entire, all of humanity was evil in the sight of God. We had a great flood. Killed everybody but eight people, Noah and his family. And God started over again. And so here we are now, all these years later, and we're still going right back to the same rot that they did. What was it? The sexuality, the sins of sexuality that were going on prior to Noah, every thought, every imagination was evil. Every thought, every imagination, action, evil. Things that happened with Sodom and Gomorrah were just horrific things. We just learned about it in Sunday school a couple of weeks ago. People so blinded by their appetites that were just out of the, out of, out of the norm, that were so driven beyond what they could even control. What is happening in our nation? We're watching as we're drifting away from God and we're redefining what reality is. We're redefining what's right, what's wrong. We're redefining all types of things. You can't redefine right, wrong, God, boy, girl, God creator, Jesus Christ the Savior. You don't get to make up your own Savior. You don't say, well, this is my God. Over in uh, India, they say there's literally millions of gods in India. And what it keeps happening, people just put more and more statues in their yard hoping one of them's the right one. Well, none of them are the right one. There is only one God. It's the Trinity, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God Almighty himself. Make up the Trinity all in one, the deity of Christ, the deity of God, all these things. And we see Christ in our lives as our Savior you can say all these things that bring you perhaps to a God moment. Maybe the first time you put a child in your arms, you say, man, that, Pastor, that was my God moment. And I came to realize that there was a God. That's not your moment. That was a great moment in my life. All my children being born were great moments. But feeling like that saved you and that, that's going to take you to heaven because you had a God moment is not, is not the truth. Was your life transformed when you survived an accident? You lived? Did you go right back to being who you were? Or was your life transformed by that? Was your life transformed because you walked out in the woods and you say, man, maybe there's a God or there is a God or that's my God time. Is it really or are you hunting? Is being on the lake really God time or is you're fishing? All these, all these excuses for why I'm making up my own God are worthless. You don't get to make him up. He made you up, literally. He formed you in the belly of your mother's womb, the Bible said. I knew you before you were even born. Why do you think we're so against abortion? Because God knew you before you were even born and then formed you in the belly of your mother. And here we are having a nation with 60 plus million of abortions. And now resolving that, how do they resolve that? What is their excuse for that? It's complete barbaric behavior under any circumstances. An innocent child being killed in the mother's womb should be the safest place in the world. You can't look to a God moment 
There's only one thing that is going to change and transform your life. And that is when you come to the point to realize that you don't get to make up God. God made you. And God literally makes the rules. If, you, if our nation just would abide by the Ten Commandments, which, of course, we threw that out too, but just by simple Ten Commandments would transform our nation into a place that would, if people would just try. None of us are going to keep them perfectly, even, even the Ten. But if we would just look at those as we did in the old days, but those are gone. Now everybody's redefining everything from the human body to religion to faith. Everything is now redefined. Jesus Christ is very simple in a statement. He says this. It's very, very easy to understand. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is one way. One way to Christ. One way is through Christ, pardon me. One way to, to God is through Jesus Christ. One way to heaven is Jesus Christ. He is the Savior. He is the only Savior. And you will only, only escape and go to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Therefore, somebody has to be wrong and somebody has to be right. That is the truth. Somebody's got to be wrong and somebody's got to be right. You've heard this illustration before. Number one, three logical opinions. You got a choice of one. One, Jesus Christ is a world-class liar. I mean, when you think for 2,000 years... 2,000 years, over 2,000 years ago, he came to earth. And, and the church has literally nearly covered the globe that still believe in Jesus Christ who died and rose again. I will tell you, if somebody could get millions and billions of people for 2,000 years, that is a world-class lie. If you could do that, I don't know anything that could stick around that long that is just a scam. Number two, he's a lunatic. He said he was God. He said he was the creator. He said he was the savior. You go to the cross and you're not the Christ, you are indeed a lunatic. Amen? Why would you go to the cross and die for sins if you're not the Christ? Why would you subject a man that lived a sinless life? Why would he subject himself to this? If he's not the Christ, he, he would have to be completely crazy. And then there's a third choice. He was, he is, and he is to come. He is the Christ he is the son of the living God. His name is Jesus. What a wonderful name. He's declared to be the eternal son of God. Today we would like to diminish him down to the other prophets. Buddha, Muhammad, fill in the blank. And we'd like to say, well, they're all just religious leaders, right? Wrong answer. All those guys are buried. If you get over to Israel, you're going to find an empty tomb because there's one of the bunch. There's probably millions of gods, but there's only one that came out of the grave, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. He lives, and he's Jesus the writings of Jesus Christ have been profound since the moment he stepped on earth and he spoke, and they still stand true. 3.9 3. billion have been sold, and they believe that many more than 3.9 billion have been given away. There are literally plants all over this country that print Bibles and send them without being sold all over the world. I mean, it's, it's, going, it's, it's always been ongoing from the United States and probably other countries sending Bibles to all these foreign countries, sending Bibles. They, they believe that exceeds the 3.9 billion that have been sold. That would be quite an individual that could write that kind of writing that would 
no other book would ever compare to it in its writings. It'd be quite an individual that could do that if it wasn't the Christ. Honestly, nobody ever has done it. It is the word of God, and we value it, we cherish it, and it is the way of salvation to come to know Christ through his word, the Bible. He is the way. He's the truth and the life. Here's a thought for you. I read this, it stuck out to me. He is the most expected person that has ever lived. Perhaps the only one. Do you realize that from the fall of man until now, roughly 6,000 years, we have looked for our Savior's return. He's the most expected person in the history of mankind. Christians, since, since they came to, to earth from the Garden of Eden, have looked forward to that day when Jesus Christ would what, come the first time and he would be the Messiah who would die on the cross for their sins. And we see that all through the Old Testament. The most expected person that they looked for was Messiah. And he came. And now all these years, now we look back to the cross and we look forward to the day that Jesus Christ comes again. And we look forward to the day when Christ returns and takes us in the rapture to heaven. If not by death, if we could go with him in the, in the rapture, you understand, who else have people expected for that many years that someday he would come? All we see in the book of Hebrews, I believe, is it says, well, you know, always the promise of his coming. Where's he at? Where's the promise of his coming? What's the answer to the question? It's because he has long suffering. He is not slack concerning his promises but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. If you're in the room this morning and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you've never asked Him to save you, you never you committed your faith in Him for salvation. In other words, to take you to heaven when you die. If you've never done that, for one moment, I want you to think, had Jesus come yesterday, you would have no hope to ever be saved. You would be on your way to hell, and you would have no hope. It's over. The rapture has come. You're done. You have no more chances. You heard it today. If tomorrow Jesus were come and you rejected him today, you would have no more hope again in your life. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Why does it say today? Because on the day that you hear it, you need to receive it because you're not promised another day. I was at a funeral, saying at a funeral yesterday. Uh, very unexpectedly, a man passed away. And just just gone. I just, whack, he was, he was gone and just, he was sick and in a couple days he was gone. We had his funeral. Do you understand that God delays not because he is slack in his promise. He's delaying so that you today can get saved. Do you understand that? He's delaying for you to trust Christ as your Savior. That is why. He's unwilling that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's the love of God that holds it off. To mock him for not coming is to destine your own soul. You have an opportunity today. Take your opportunity while you still have it. Look at your life. Many would say, I'm a, I believe. I believed. I believe in God. I got my God moment. Look at your life. Is there any evidence of God in your life? Is there any transformation in your life? Christian young people, you've been taught God all your life. But from your heart, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior? And that he can save you and forgive you. And you can put your total faith in him. I don't care if you've drawn up, you know the Bible verse after verse by heart. doesn't matter if the, unless you've personally put your faith from your heart in Jesus Christ. 
Some may say they're atheists, and you can see their lives, and you can testify to the fact that, yeah, that person lives like an atheist. And then there's people that know Christ as their Savior. And you could say of them, they live like an atheist. Pray that that's not us, and I don't think it is here at the church. We have outstanding people that love Christ. Is Christianity just a moral law that helps us be better people and brings us closer to God because of our goodness? Many churches would teach you to do that. Do these things, do these things, and you become a good person. You're closer to God, and you can get to heaven. You will only get to heaven through Jesus Christ. There will be no church that can do anything that will save your soul. It is the blood of Christ alone that will save you. You can drink his blood or what you think is his blood until, until, you're, until you're drunken with it. It won't save, won't save you at all. You can take communion all day long. You can get baptized till, till we empty the water of, of uh, empty the baptistry of water because you've soaked up so much water. We baptize you so many times. It won't bring you one one step closer. Baptism, sprinkling, communion. None of those things will save you. There's one way to heaven. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't come that way, you don't come at all. You're not going to be a Christian by buying a Bible or keeping its rules. You can become a Christian when you come to Jesus Christ alone. Peter declares it, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Is he your Savior this morning? Do you believe in him this morning? Have you committed your life to him this morning? Do you trust him this morning? He is the only hope. The Bible says in Acts 4.12, Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Who do men say that I am? Who do you say he is today? He said to Peter and the disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Is he your savior today every head bowed every eye closed please just for a moment we have what's called an invitation you're given an opportunity to trust Christ as your savior don't delay today's the day there's a lot of gamblers in our country don't risk another day. The cost is way more than you want to pay. Eternity separated from God. We'll sing our invitation. Let's stand together, please. Pastor Nelson is here at the front as always. You say, well, Pastor, it'd be embarrassing. No, it'd be the most joyous day of your life, the most joyous day for us here at the church. See somebody that would trust the Lord. Just keep every head bowed, every eye closed. Stanza, come quickly. Without him, I would be dying. Without him, I'd be enslaved. Without him, life would be hopeless. But with Jesus. 
Pastor Nelson, would you come close us in a word of prayer? Um, I'll take these brochures out there. I just have a, three of them on the on the marriage retreat, but we probably need to give me some inclination so I could get them a number of our friendship. And if you're interested in that, uh, you can let me know that, or I'll give you a brochure if we have any left. Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for being the way, the truth, and the life the one we could run to, to come to, Lord, to know that we have eternal life through your shed blood. Lord, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And Lord, giving us direction in life. Lord, giving us your word, giving us your promises, giving us eternity. Lord, we are forever indebted to you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for it. Lord, I pray that you just bless us now. Keep us safe as we head go home. Lord, bring us all back tonight for our, for our Sunday evening service. Lord, may it just be refreshing to our hearts and our souls. Lord, we ask these things in your name. Amen. Thank you.